guys, today I'm going to be showing you um, how to make a watercolour mixing chart and I'm going to be using these paints from St. Petersburg White Knights. Um, it's the Urban Sketches set that you can buy directly from them. It comes in a metal tin. They're a bit of a squeeze but you can fit all 14 colours that they send with it in there. Um, so that's the colours that I'm going to create a chart for today. So this is the watercolour paper I'm going to be using today for um, my colour mixing chart and as mentioned these are the paints I'm going to use. So there's 14 different colours here, um, one, one or two yellowy kind of shades, a couple of reds, a few blues um, and some br uh, green, some brown shades and a couple of darker shades like the indigo and the paint's grey. Um, I wouldn't do many more colours than 14 because this chart did actually um, take me a fair few hours. Um, so I would just do kind of 14 or less would be my um, recommendation. Um, so first of all, because I've got 14 colours, I just want to think about what size of square I want to um, have each colour in. So I was thinking about two centimetre squares at first and then realised I could not fit that on my A3 size piece of paper. So I moved down to 1.5 centimetres um, and that actually is a really nice size and that worked well on my A3 size paper. So I've got 14 colours um, and I multiplied that by the 1.5 centimeter size of square that I wanted um, and that gave me 21 centimeters so I created that square on this page you might see me drawing um, 22.5 centimeters because I did actually initially uh, do 15 um, squares down and across um, and then realized that I didn't need those I needed 14 so a bit of a maths error there um, so I'm just going around and drawing out my um, overall outside grid, or square, sorry. Now I'm going to go along the top line there and just mark out the 1.5 um, intervals for the different squares so that I can then draw the columns. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing down the side as well. Okay, so now I um, have marked off the intervals. I'm just going to join them up so I can kind of get the straightest lines possible. It doesn't really matter about being too, too neat, but, um, you know, it's a tool that you're going to use for reference in future. So wanted to try and make it kind of as accurate as possible really. Um, so I do draw the lines downwards to make the columns and then join up the intervals um, horizontally as well to make the rows and then we will have our grid ready to go. I'm just going to um, write out the names of the paints uh, down the side um, so I see know which uh, paint I'm using and which one I need to use. Um, so I'm doing that in the order that my paints are in my tin, sort of going from the top right hand corner to the bottom, no sorry, the top left hand corner down to the bottom right hand corner. So kind of roughly in a, you know, doing the yellows and then the reds and violet and green, blues, into the browns and into the sort of um, Payne's grey um, colour. So it's obviously important to make sure that you list out your colours um, down the side um, and across the top in the same order. So I'm going to start um, the chart now. And I'm going to start with my Indian yellow um, because that is the first 
uh, square so at the top there I've got Indian yellow labelled on the left and I've got Indian yellow labelled on the top so it's just that pure pigment straight out of the pan um, and I'm painting it in that square there. I'm using a small dagger brush from Rosemary & Co because um, it's got a bit of a, a sharper kind of point so I can paint a reasonably neat square got like a flat brush or something that's perfect for this exercise but if you don't if you've just got a round brush that's fine you just have to work a tiny bit harder to make it neater um, if you want um, it, it's also uh, great to have a separate palette um, like you can see that I'm using it just helps have more space to make the different um, different mixtures of colors that you need to, to make a chart like this um, so I'm just putting more Indian yellow in this mixture than I have Indian gold. So Indian yellow is on the, the label on the top, Indian gold is the label on the left. And now what I'm doing is taking that existing mixture and just adding a bit more Indian gold to it and then painting it in the square next to the first one we painted. And that's because um, now Indian gold is the label on the top. So that is now the stronger colour in that mixture. It's, it's got more Indian gold than Indian yellow. I hope that makes sense. So the, the paints listed on the top are the stronger the stronger of the two um, colours. So I'm just going to zoom in here for you. So you can see what I've just painted is got Indian gold on the top so it's got mostly Indian gold in that mixture with a bit of Indian yellow which is the label on the left. So now we need to carry on making the chart and making it in this way so we can um, do at least two squares together with the same, the same mixture. So now I'm painting in the square that is Indian gold on the left and Indian gold on the top. So that is just pure pigment straight from the pan. The other thing you have to be careful with when you're doing this is just uh, that the other squares are dry or that you kind of don't quite meet the edge with them because then they blend into each other, which I did do a couple of times with this chart. Um, a couple of them I saved, but um, so yeah, it's a good idea. You can see on my uh, the end picture of my chart there's a few white gaps because I was trying to avoid the colours blending into each other if the square wasn't quite dry yet. So now I'm going to stay in the column marked Indian yellow, so that first column, and I'm moving down to the third row which says English red. So I've got a bit of Indian yellow, or quite a bit of Indian yellow on my palette there, and I've mixed in a bit of English red, because Indian yellow is my main colour, and then I've just mixed in a little bit of English red, because English red is marked on the left hand side of the grid. So I'm just painting that in. Um, and then once I finish this square, I'm gonna use that same mixture, but then I'm just gonna add in a bit more English red to make English red the more dominant color. And then I'm gonna paint in the square at the top where English red meets, at the marked on the top, meets Indian yellow on the left. So I'm just gonna do that now. So you can tell um, from the colour, you can just see that it's the mixture has a bit more red in it than the yellow. So I'm just going to paint that square in. So now I'm um, putting a fresh bit of Indian yellow down on my palette. I'm ready to mix with my next colour, um, which you might be able to see on the left there is vermilion. So this is like quite a bright red. Kind of colour, so I'm just putting a little bit in 
into my mixture as it is quite a bright colour so it's easy to overpower um, the Indian yellow and I want to make sure that I get a nice distinction between which colour is the strongest in the mixture. So I'm just painting in that square there and then I'm going to take that mixture and add even more vermilion to it um, to paint the corresponding square on the top where vermilion jars of water to do this exercise so you want to have one jar of water which you wash your dirty brush in and then the second jar of water will have clean water in it where you can pick up water to activate your paints um, that way then you won't contaminate um, the mixtures that you're putting down on your chart it might seem a bit over the top but again we're making a chart to kind of use as a um, future reference for, for mixing so it's kind of important to not contaminate the um, the mixtures too much um, I did not do this so I speak for experience but I, I had to keep getting up and changing my water all the time so that kind of took a bit of extra time so I would recommend having two jars of water if you, if you can violet rose so again it's a mainly Indian yellow with a bit of the uh, quinadricone violet rose which goes in that first column and then I'm going to take a bit more of the violet rose colour and then paint that in the top column uh, top row sorry to put the rest of the video into time lapse so you can watch me create the rest of the chart um, obviously in real life this took me uh, quite a few hours more than I was expecting but it really has been super useful to make um, this this kind of chart it makes it helps me understand what mixtures I can achieve from the 14 colors I have in my palette um, especially the various different shades of green I found that really useful um, to uh, have that kind of reference to understand which which colors to mix and in what quantities to get what kinds of greens so i hope you found uh, this explanation useful i do have um, a written explanation and blog post all about mixing colors and also color theory for urban sketching specifically um, over on my website which is urbansketchingworld.com loads of other articles as well over there um, about everything to do with urban sketching um, so do go and check it out in the description below I have some links to um, various bits and bobs that I use for my urban sketches or my illustrations at home uh, some of them are affiliate links uh, to Amazon um, and also to Skillshare which is a great platform to learn further illustration skills as well as various other um, things like photography and stuff like that so do check that out um, and if you've got any questions about this process please do leave a comment below i hope this was useful thanks guys bye